Yo guys, what's up? Playing Jackson to Cassante top, but before we can get into the laning, um, we gotta get through this uh, spicy level 1 invade first. So, start E, wait for them at the front of the bush, start fighting immediately. Rengar flashes, we walk back, we've been focusing Rengar, we've already got the damage on him, keep beating on him. Keep smacking, keep smacking, use my lethal tempo, use the passive, use my ghost, run away, flash away, don't wanna die to Cassante, run, run, run. And, yeah, just disengage from there. So yeah. Pretty, like, saved it. We did come out ahead in that. Um, Zach gets the kill on Rengar. Uh, top lane's a little bit scuffed, though, because I am now down both of my summoners and down 500 health. So, I can't walk up for minions now. Uh, I get clipped by the Q there and the auto attack. Terrible, terrible. Um, but, you know, that auto attack he did on me made the minions focus him for a second, which lets it push to me a little bit more. So now I'm just going to stand 20 kilometers away, you know, um, just not take any more harass. And just, uh, you know, let the wave push to me. Um, I don't want to drop any lower than I currently am, otherwise I'm diveable. Um, so I'll just let my D-Blade sustain me up, D-Shield, let my D-Shield sustain me up. Um, I, uh, two minions died in front of me and I didn't get XP for them, that's kind of bad. I probably should have tried to walk up further just to stay in XP range. Or no, I no, not I probably should have, I should have, but I guess I miscalculated the XP range, and um, yeah, so I just didn't get XP for those, oh well, unlucky, sad, whatever. As long as I don't die now and lose all of these minions, it's recoverable. So right here, Cassante just, in my face, just takes a play to, like, to proxy demolish off me, but I can't actually walk up to auto attack him, because if I do that, um, I will have all those minions just start focusing me and then I'm actually just gonna take a lot of damage so he took a tower shot there which was pretty um which is pretty which helps a little bit but right now I'm just trying to space his cues while trying to get um what's the name CS here I take a quick trade because um here there I take a quick trade because I'm right up against my tower so he had two options there he either W's at me like he did and then takes a tower shot which helps which you know tower shots him tanking tower shot obviously helps with the trade or he just doesn't follow up, in which case I just get free damage off of him, because he can't extend the trade on me. So now it's just uh, slow pushing back to him. Um, I'm just going to slow push this wave, in a, and then plan to hard shove the next one. So that I can have as big of a minion wave as possible to help me crash this wave. Because I just need, I, I just want, like, all I really need is a reset right now. Although to be fair, Cassante is pretty low on mana, I never mind he leveled. Uh, trade my W with his grasp there. So here I'm just going to start shoving the wave as hard as I possibly can, you know, auto attack as often as I can. Here I jump on him, get him, beat on him a bit, make sure my E hits the whole wave so that I can trade with him while also continuing to push the wave. Here I decide to just go for the trade here because he actually is kind of low and if somebody drops that low and the wave's about to crash into their tower, uh, then you can start to look for a dive. So walk into his melee range, I kind of mess it up here. You don't usually want to use your Q, Q to start the dive, right? So like what I did was I... Just walked up to him and just uh, hit him and then queued him when you made some distance. Um, immediately run up, chucking biscuits so that minions don't kill me. Because um, I don't want to run down in case Ringo was there, and he was. So just reset. And Wave is pushing back to me, so we take those. And also we got Ringo to show top, waste time top, so huge win, huge win. So yeah, you can see I now have a long sword. Um, over him. I have a Sheen and Longsword and a potion to his only Sheen purchase, and he lost TP. Super worth, super big. So now I just have to um, go back top lane, catch my big fat wave. And, um... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he gets the Demolish proc here. I can't stop him from taking the plate. I smack him a little bit here, but... I can't stop him from taking the plate that time, but it's not like I... Um, could have done anything about it, like, it's not like I could have stayed to deny him, he has t he had TP advantage, so... Um, he had TP on me, so it's not like I could deny him that plate, but you know what, it's still such a super huge win, you know, solo kill, plus denying him whatever minions he lost under tower while he was rezzing. So here I'm not jumping on him, because I don't know where Rengar is, and I it would really suck if he just ganked me out of the bush right now, right? But here I'm willing to jump on him because I just hit 6, and now I'm pretty sure I could 1v2 them. Because something that Rengars like to do is when the wave crashes into you, they like to, when the wave starts bouncing back, sit in the bush. And you see, here's Rengar, right? But I'm fine with that now. I pop Ghost, I'm here to fight now, because I'm level 6, I'm ready to fight them. 
I'm up for fighting them completely, and you see it's just a 1v2 because I have ult advantage. Rengar hadn't backed yet either, so yeah, they were just um, they just weren't strong enough to do the 1v2 there. I mean the 2v1. So slow push this wave, miss some CS while you do it. You know you have to, you have to. So miss some CS 1v0, and um, hard shove this wave. Because if I started hard shoving the wave previously, then the last wave I wouldn't have been able to crash it before um, before the next wave got here. But this wave I can, and I shove it, and I crash it. Um, I'll lose the playthrough to these minions, but I can't stay for it because what would happen is then I would be stuck in lane, right? If I give up my back timer there, it's really important to keep up with your back timers properly, right? Some action going down bot lane. It's really important to um, you do proper back timings because the thing is that what ends up happening is if I went and stayed for the plate there, I would have been stuck in lane with pretty much no mana and like low health. Versus a fully reset at Cassante, right? And then what would happen? I would then be stuck in lane, I'd never be able to go aggressive, I'd never be able to use my lead. Or I'd have to recall, and then come running back, but by then Cassante would crash a wave into the tower, and then take a plate. You know, so he would punish me really hard if I tried to go for that plate there. So back here, um, respecting the Rengar, or no, I guess, I guess not. Um... I mean, to be fair, I am fairly strong, and I do have flash in case Rengar is here. I do have flash, I do have my E. I didn't use my E when I jumped on him there, yeah. In case uh, Rengar does show. So, he, if he jumps on me, I can just E, and then if I have to, at worst case, I can flash out, you know. But, you know, I can start limit testing a bit here because... Um, Rengar, doesn't have Rengar doesn't have flash, I do. And Cassante doesn't have ghost either. So we're worried they're doing Herald, but then we spot and we see that no, they are not. So Cassante then has probably just backed. And I will just continue to slow push this. I don't think I'd be able to crash into his tower before he got back to lane. So this would deny more minions, and this secures me a bigger um, crash as well. This denies him more minions because... Um, his minions would kill some of mine, right? Here I just crash the wave because the wave would get caught in front of his tower anyway. If I don't hard shove it here. That's one reason. The other reason is that we're doing Herald, so I want the wave to be pushed in. Because if you're taking an objective, right, um, you'd ideally want to push the wave out so that if your top laner comes and contests the objective, then they'd lose the wave and then the wave, and then their wave would catch your wave under his tower, which would then cause the wave to push back towards you, right? So then at the end of it, your the enemy top laner is going to lose so many, so much more minions than you do. That goes for the gank here. Uh, Cassante immediately presses R. And Zack takes all the minions because he pressed R as well. But it's fine, whatever. We got Cassante R, so he's not really a threat in the... Um, he, he, Cassante is like, going to have a very hard time killing you without his R. I should have... I, I tried to pull the wave there. I really should have um, tried to pull it sooner. What happened was I tried to pull the wave there, but then only five of the six creeps aggroed on me. The last one caught with my wave, which is, you know, um, scuffs it. It means that that is not going to work. What I should have done is I should have walked out earlier and um, and caught all six minions and then dragged them back so that I could create a slow push towards myself and then eventually freeze it towards my tower. So, you know, just taking some short trades onto Cassante here. I'm so far ahead. I'm so strong. I'm not scared of Rengar at all at this point. So I'm just jumping onto the Cassante every chance I get. I hard shove the wave here. Because it's pushing anyway, right? And also, um, he didn't he doesn't have W, right? So I can look for a dive here. See, I woke up, melee range. I don't use Q until he makes distance from me, until he uses E to dash away from me, I believe. So, and then yeah, just gap close and then just finish him off. Because that's the thing. Um, Cassante was down like to half health and he didn't have his W, which is a big tool that prevents him from being dove, right? But since it was on cooldown, I could shove the wave and then just dive him like that. It's important to keep in mind, like, what tool the enemy top laner has that prevents you from diving them. And then if that tool is on cooldown, then uh, you abuse that timer and you uh, freaking uh, murder them. Here I just time his uh, TP. Timing sums is uh, super valuable. So here, back to top lane. Just going to catch my wave as he pushes it back. 
I've got my Divine Sunderer now, so there's really no chance of uh, Kasante getting anything done versus me anymore. Mythic to non-mythic is just such a huge power gap. So here I saw that the Ezreal ult uh, tagged some minions, so it's going to push back to him pretty, like, reasonably fast anyway. So I'm like, I'll just shove. I see Kasante in mid, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hard shove this and, um, you know, time to take some plates, you know? Have some alone time with, uh, with Kasante's top tower, you know? Don't mind if I do. Ezreal getting a little bit over there. Unlucky. But, you know, that doesn't matter, you know, um... Because why, why would anything matter? The only thing that matters is getting that juicy, juicy plate gold. Look at that, yes. Get a minion wave as well. There we go. Fight, fight happening in the jungle as well, but um, yep, yeah, just that's Rengar's ult. I don't actually know if it goes on cooldown when that happens, but... Yeah, we hear Corky took his package, so we need to keep that in mind. Meanwhile, I just took, um, I just got the full tower, first blood tower with, uh, with full plates, so I am now loaded. 1.9k gold in the bank. So I decide, uh, you know what, um, time to back and spend it. Because, you know, you don't really want to be on the map floating that much gold, right? Like, that's so much gold to just be, uh, have sitting in your inventory. So I decided to go for, I decided to go Frozen Heart this game, because... Um, they have 3 AD, and even Corky is, like, kind of an auto-attacker, and eh, he's, like, you know, he's, like, an auto-attacker caster hybrid thing. So, eh, I decide, you know, Frozen Heart's probably the play here. So, we get his package out. I'm looking for a play here, seeing if maybe they overextend. And see, yeah, no, nothing really is happening. So, time to go top lane. Yeah, time to go top lane, catch that wave. Ignore the scuttle for now because that wave is going to die up top lane before um, if I take the scuttle now I'm gonna lose that pretty much that whole wave top lane, so I'd lose as much gold as I'd get Probably more I'd probably lose more gold next be taking the scuttle and losing that wave top lane, so you know just grab the top wave Shove shove Maybe if you're maybe if you're the jungler you can make a stronger case for um doing the scuttle there rather because you have your uh, biscuits and I think junglers get more XP from camps though I could be wrong but yeah just shove this wave as well shove as fast as you can <clears throat> now go check the jungle to see if there's anything you can do here so you see rotating I'm looking for plays right now because Cassante is just gonna stonewall me at the tower right there's no point plus ring guards here it's not like I can um, just play under their tower right now, right? I could 1v2 them, I'm certain, but uh, I couldn't uh, just, you know, fight them under tower, they'll just run away. So, we see Corky's dead, and so I decide to rotate down to this dra to this tower. I'm hovering here to see maybe Rengar walks up to defend the tower from Rise, so that maybe, so that if he walks up, I can then just go kill him. But then we see he just continues walking down, and then I see there's a play to be made bot lane, so it's time to rotate down to bot lane. Um, maybe get a... Yeah, just come, just come and get the flank off. Here I awaited the blast cone to see if Ryze wants to take it with me, but he just ignores it, so whatever. So I see Ryze going up through rivers, so I go through this way, so they have absolutely no chance of escaping. Beat on the Rakan. Um, he stopwatches, so donate that kill to Ryze. Uh, go collect the Rengar. And then Lucian suicides to the tower. And uh, yeah, that's how you win the game with Macro. That, that right there, just... Um, We'll end the game. That, that, that right there is like game winning, you know? And uh, yeah, now I'm moving up to Corky. To, I see him beating on the tower, so you know, I don't need to beat on the tower bot lane or anything, right? I'll decide, you know what, I'll just rotate up to Corky here. See if I can deny him. I should jump to these... Nah. I, so I ghost after him. I could ward up over here, but I flash because uh, I panic a bit. I really don't want the Corky to get away. Uh, yeah, a bit of a misplay by me. I probably didn't... I didn't need to use flash there, but oh well. And, uh, yeah, just four kills, just through rotations, just through macro. And uh, if you guys want to see more crazy macro gameplay, remember to uh, like and subscribe. Would really help, uh, would really appreciate it, would help me out a lot. So, back to top lane, shove out that wave. Um, yep, so here we are, we see three bot lane, they killed the rise, so... 
uh, we decide, you know what, let's do Herald. Ezreal calls for it, and I agree. So let's just see. So we decide to grab the Herald here. We have complete, we have pretty much control in the river right now. I mean, not the river, the mid lane. We don't see any, Lucian's pushing it out now, but we have like the tempo to be able to do this Herald here. See, floating a, now I'm floating a bunch of gold again, so I really want to get the Frozen Heart. And then I decide to go Black Cleaver here, because I'm not really scared of Corky, and I want the ability haste that it gives, so that I can uh, get more mobility and more E cooldown, right? But yeah, I ended up taking the Herald, which I don't usually like doing, because it keeps me from using my Trinket to ward hop. But, uh, you know, uh, Ezreal wasn't going to be able to make better use of it than I would, so... So, we go over here. Uh, my team was already all bot lane, so I decide, you know what? I'm just going to do Dragon. You know, I'm just going to group bot with Dragon, since my whole team is bot lane anyway. Ezreal's not, but um, I was willing to fight the 4v4 without him. But now we see Corky's top lane as well, so there's no way they can test it. And here we look for the fight. Rise is ulting in. We're l Rakan does a gets a big ulti here. Uh, just peels for his team. A, he just he's just a sacrificial lamb to make sure everybody gets out. Which is fair play by him. Get a ward down here because this is a nice uh, deep ward that do usually doesn't get discovered very quickly. And also gives valuable vision, especially if you are split pushing bot lane. So, you know, time to push, time to push. I want this tower, I'm gonna see if I can get it. Gotta shove this wave, and there's Cassante, which is to be expected, right? He's going to um, assume that I'm going to push out bot lane, and then he's gonna come match. See, so they just took my pink ward, and I don't really want to, uh, and I don't know where Rakan is, so I don't really want to get 1v3'd here. So I'm just going to hover around here. I don't even want to put, put my pink in the tri bush because Rengar is bot side, right? He can just come and take my uh, my pink if I decide to, you know, uh, put one down. So, you know, just wait around. Back to wave clearing, shove the wave again. There we go, we see Rengar top lane. And we see Rakan top lane, so now I'm more comfortable being able to push. So clear that ward. And then since I know it's only Cassante down here, I'm like, okay, now I feel comfortable putting down the Herald, you know? I can uh, protect the Herald against Cassante only, right? My worry was that I would drop the Herald and then the whole team would just show up there. Jump up the Cassante, get some damage off on him. But the, the Iceborne Gauntlet and then him breaking vision just makes it impossible for me to stay on him. But it's fine, it's whatever. Got the tower, keep pushing, keep pushing. Get the um, Divine Sunder proc on him there. Getting the quick uh, tag trades with the Divine Sunder there. Well, like, getting quick tabs, tags with EW is really nice for Divine Sunder. Um, get bonked by the tower there, unfortunate. Go over here, I want to get some hits on the tower, but again, it outplays me. The tower is just too good at the game and just uh, bonks me again. So I decide, you know what, uh, maybe I will disengage. I see Corky's pushed up, right? Cassante has to clear the wave, so I have a roam timer on him. I, uh, I have a tempo advantage on him, so I can go over and contest the Corky. We see Lucien bot, we see Rengar Rakan top. So I'm like, okay, maybe I can get this Corky really quick if I can catch him. But he's just a bit too fast, he's just a bit too far away. Jump on his head, but I see the Rakan, and I'm like, okay, maybe I will not. And then I decide, you know what, it's time to back, right? So, might as well back. Uh, 400, we are currently sitting at 1.5k, we could get 20 ability haste here, 25 AD and like 50 health. So obviously that's huge value, right? So might as well just back, get, uh, get our health back as well, get health in that back. So I decided, I wanted to go bot lane there, farm that up and push that wave. But then, um, you know, I see that, uh, my team's uh, fighting here again. So I'm like, you know what, oh, I'll, get, I'll be a good teammate and I will... Instead of going for farm, go assist the team here. Corky's, you know, wondering if he can help. I'm there to tell him no. Corky and I were obviously super useful in that fight. You know, we did so much. But, you know, um, I just rotated there to make sure that we win that. Because that is one of the ways that you can just kind of... Um, oh, Rice gets hit by that R. That is one of the ways you can um, kind of throw the game, have the game completely turn on its head, is just losing, like, a team fight in their jungle, right? 
I didn't want that to happen. That doesn't mean that you have to rotate to every fight your team takes, right? But if you can, if it's an option, then make sure that you can be there as some assurance if your team is ahead in taking fights like that. Because if you're not there and it becomes a 5v4 and then you lose, then it can become really unfortunate and the game can become a lot harder than it needs to be. So dragon spawning in 40 seconds. So I'm going bot lane here to shove the bot lane out so that we can have wave prior. But then of course, you know, as I'm on my way pathing bot lane, uh, Rise TP's there. Um, you know, Rise just uh, decided, you know, that he wanted that farm and nobody was going to change that. So we hear Corky take the package and that is something to be uh, take big note of because here's the thing. Corky package is really strong and him having it for dragon is like something we really need to take care of. I see Corky in mid lane and I actually want to go jump on his head to try to force him to use his package so that he doesn't have it for the fight. So we managed to get him, we get Kisante's TP. I, bur I waste my ult there because I really, really wanted to make sure the Corky like got a one shot in the burst. Because uh, Corky was doing a lot of damage to me and I was really surprised by how much damage I was actually taking from him there. So, which is my bad to be fair, but yeah. So Ryze and Morgana are 2v2 bot lane and Morgana's actually just holding and distracting them and baiting them for a long time. She's just like fighting, she's like 1v2ing them here after they finish off Ryze. We go over to help. Morgana drops sad, but you know, quick clean, quick and easy clean up here. Here I really want to do the dragon because Infernal Dragon is really nice. It gives you a lot of golden stats. And um, I really, yeah, I really want to do it. Also gets you closer to soul. You know, dragons are just super helpful, useful, so. Zack finally decides to come over and beat on the thing. Ezreal's here as well, so yeah. Dragon secured. Denied in the objective bounty as well. So here I finally finish up my Black Cleaver. And then I decide, uh, you know what? Maybe I should get a bit of MR, you know? Maybe I should get a bit of MR, like... Um, cause that quirky, that quirky hurts a little bit, you know? So, pick up that null magic mantle, work towards the wit's end. So I wanted to go bot lane here, but then Ryze uh, was already on his way there, so I'm like, okay, I will just rotate to a different portion of the map, maybe just push top lane. Corky is, um, is something, I'll tell you what. He's a doing something. But yeah, so I grab Scuttle here. We have, um, we have control of the side of the map for now. Ryze is pushing really far right now because he, we saw everybody toppling, so he's allowed to. He gets uh, um, 600 gold from the tower there, big. So now we're just doing some 1v1 one 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 action. I mean, I guess it's 1-2-1 one one because of, what's his name? Ja Zack is uh, farming his red, but you know, whatever. So... Yep, there's Lucien, he's holding the tower, so I decide, you know what, okay, I'll just beat on this Gromp a bit, see if Morgana wants it. So I slowly, tentatively beat on it, drop it lower. And then, uh, yeah, she didn't want it, so I decide to take it. Zach goes for the engage, uh, we get nothing, oh well, oh well. Uh, Lucien starts ulting to get us off the tower. Morgana lands a really weird route, gets his cleanse, and then the fight starts out. Rakan presses R, I press R, I miss it. Get ulted, jump onto the Rakan, just playing the peel right now, cover the Morgana. Now I'm just here, I'm here walking in here, using my E as a defensive tool to dodge auto attacks. Um, just peeling the rise right now, waiting for my E to come back before I go in. And then I decide to just go Psycho here because I realize that we can win this team fight if I land that stun on everybody and just go ham. So I decide to sacrifice myself for the fight there. I did play that team fight pretty badly. I was worried about getting one shot. So I tried to ult the Rakan as he was running at me with his ultimate while he was like, you know, ulting. And then he W'd at the same second. So then I missed the ultimate completely. I didn't get the resistances at all. So I just got freaking gipped way faster than I needed to be. Like I just, I just dropped way faster than I should have. Um, so yeah, if I landed that ult, I probably didn't need to die there. But it's fine, it's fine. Like we still won the fight. I, give, I gave away like my 1k called shutdown, which sucks, but, you know, at least we won the fight. We got towers. 
Rukan's going on the Morgana here. She black shields it. She lands the, <laughs> she lands the roots on the Lucian. Oh my goodness, and he just gets chunked out. My goodness, Morgana is so like, uh, painful to play versus. Ringo just freaking murders them both. Fair enough. So I decide to go mid lane here. We don't have um, anybody to farm this, but then I realize, yeah, I mean that wave is probably pretty much dead already. So I'll just loop around like this, go bot lane. And uh, yeah, I'm going for the Cassante here. Um, yeah, I'm not really scared of Rengar. I'm fairly confident that I can just, you know, run this guy down. Because Rengar probably didn't have ult for me. So yeah, I ghost there as well. I didn't really need to. I don't think I needed to ghost there, but... Um, you know, I just did it for security's sake, because for safety's sake. Because I really need to make sure that that Cassante uh, went down there. Because if he didn't, then... I mean, it's a, it's a big that he did. It's big that he did, right? Because now I can still push freely and aggressively, right? Like, no single other person on their team, except for maybe Rengar, can hold me uh, under their towers. So, my team just uh, aces them all mid lane, pretty much. Corky gets his package. He goes in for the Rise. Rise just roots them, and then he gets re-rooted, and then... Oh, no. Corky... So we just start beating on the towers here. And uh, Ryze just drops the ultimate to give to dive the Cassante. He kidnaps Cassante kidnaps me kidnaps me into the tower, but you know I live, we get him, and uh, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, hope to see you in the next one.